the bulk of Parshat Chukotai is taken up with a set of blessings and curses predicated on B'nai Israel's observance or non-observance of the mitzvot. At the end of that section, there seems to be a summary pasuk. Eile hachukim v'hamishpatim v'hatorot asher natan Hashem beino ven b'nei Yisrael behar Sinai biad Moshe. These are the laws that God gave the people at Har Sinai biad Moshe, through at the hand of Moshe. This seems like a perfect ending for Sefer Vayikra and for the unit of mitzvot that started with Parshat Bahar. But that's not the end. Chapter 27 seems tacked on to Sefer Vayikra as a sort of appendix. Stranger, the mitzvot in chapter 27 don't seem to have any connection or reason that they're there at the end of Vayikra. The first topic addressed is the procedure for erechin, or determining the value that one must donate to the Beit HaMikdash after pledging the erech, loosely translated as value, of another person to the Beit HaMikdash. The second topic that's discussed is the sanctification of property, specifically emphasizing the prohibition of tmura, exchanging one animal that was sanctified as a korban for another animal. And the third topic is ma'aser behema, the tithing of an animals, the tithing of cattle and sheep, and the bringing of one out of every ten to the Beit HaMikdash. Why are all of these mitzvot here, and why are they an appropriate end to Sefer Vayikra? It seems that these mitzvot all emphasize humans' ability to create Kedusha, and not only to create Kedusha, but to create Kedusha which is permanent and everlasting. This is obvious in the case of Tmura, where once I have designated a specific animal to the Beit HaMikdash, even I myself am not able to switch it and exchange it, even to put a better animal in its place. The Kedusha that I originally created is set in stone and is inconvertible. This is also true though of Arachin, of the donating of the value of a person to the Beit HaMikdash. The Psukim there discuss a case of a person who is not able to pay the full value. In this case, the Torah says, Vehemido lifnei ha-kohen, he should be brought before the Kohen, and the Kohen will decide how much of the pledger's property may be seized to fulfill his debt. Clearly, the emphasis here is that once a person makes this type of pledge to the Beit HaMikdash, this is so set in stone and so permanent that even if he is poor, his property will be seized to fulfill the debt. This is true of all Nidarim and all Nidavot to the Beit HaMikdash that are discussed in other parts of the Torah, but this is the only place where the Torah explicitly mentions it. And all of the other examples are learned from, specifically, Erechin. And, at the end of the parasha, with Ma'aser Behema, the Torah contrasts this to regular ma'aser of produce, saying, v'chol ma'asar ha'aretz, mizera ha'aretz, all tithes of produce that comes from the land, mipri ha'etz, from trees, l'ashem hu, kodesh l'ashem, it is holy for God. On the other hand, when it comes to ma'asar behema, the Torah says in the next pasuk, v'chol ma'asar bakar vatzon, all tithes of cattle and sheep, kol asher yavor tachat hashavet, anything that passes under the shepherd's staff, ha'asiri yihi kodesh l'ashem, the tenth one shall be holy to God. Meaning that as opposed to regular ma'aser of produce, where it is inherently holy and it's only up to the farmer to separate it, when it comes to ma'aser behema, the person himself is who creates the kedusha. It is only kadosh if it passes under the shepherd's staff, and the shepherd declares that this is the tenth one, and this one is holy. So this message that human beings can create kedusha, and not just kedusha, but kedusha that they themselves cannot change, and kedusha that they, and kedusha with teeth that allows their property to be seized to fulfill their debt and the fact that humans are the only people that can create the Kedusha of Maaser Behema is a wonderful message for the end of Sefer Vayikra. We may believe that the world of Kedusha is one in which humans are completely passive. That's the message that we get from earlier in Parshat Bechukotai, where we are told that if we do not keep Shemitah, we will be forced off the land, and the land will rest and keep Shemitah 
even without us. We do not seem to be active participants in the world of Kedushan and Mikdash. But Sefer Vayikra ends with these three mitzvot to stress to us that we are architects of Kedusha and we are able to create Kedusha and to create serious and lasting Kedusha. We should take this message from Parashat B'chukotai and embrace our roles as creators of permanent and lasting Kedusha. Shabbat Shalom.